Well, the database that was here at SLAC was used by people around the world, but with great difficulty because they had to have an account on the mainframe. Most people weren't familiar with mainframes. And second of all, the database language that you had to type in was difficult. So before there was a web, I invented a way for people to do what's now called instant messaging and to do a query to the database without logging in. And that improved access to the database, but you still had this terrible language of the database uh, machine to, uh, to uh, type in in order to do your query. A little later on, people added an email interface, so you could send your query by email and you'd get your response back by email. So when I was at CERN in September 1991, and Tim Bernice Lee dragged me into his office to show me, give me a demo of the web. Uh, when he demonstrated, at first I wasn't very interested, but when he demonstrated doing a query to a help system database on a mainframe, I immediately put two and two together and says, well, if you can query a help system on a mainframe, you can query a database on a mainframe. And I started getting interested. The thing is that the, we couldn't change the query commands that was built in the database, but the web page could give you examples and remind you what the query would be. So did you have to write it all from scratch? I mean, did you write it from the protocol, or was there software that you reused to make your first web server? Well, I used the CERN uh, server software, which was written in C. Unfortunately, we had a C compiler on the mainframe at that at time. Now, it wasn't very long when we had a mainframe of C compiler, but we had one. So all I had to do was to write some extra C code to uh, get the, the query that the user had made and turn it into the database query. When it was December 12, 1991, we installed our, our web server. And we, we informed Tim Berners-Lee that day to give it a try. The big boost came about a month later in January in southern France where there was a workshop on computing topics for high energy and nuclear physics. And at that workshop, Tim Bernard Lee had a plenary talk. So he gave his hour long talk to about 200 physicists from around the world. And as part of his talk, he gave a demo. And at the very end, and most people I think were bored most of the time, I mean, the worst thing that software people want to think about is uh, documentation. And he was pitching documentation. <clears throat> but at the end of the talk, he connected to the Slack web server and made a query. And that really dropped a lot of draw, jaws because you instant, everybody knew the database. Everybody knew how hard it was to access. Okay, And here he just clicked away, typed in a few things for the query term, and bang, the results came back nicely formatted. So I, the way I say it, the interest in the web went from about 20 people to 200 people in that hour. Okay. Now those 200 people went back home and if each one of them told 10 people then within a week the interest in the web grew to 2,000 people. So uh, that, that was the big turning point and I think Tim recognizes that that was really the kickoff. And I think the, the reason that the, the web took off so quickly once the comers uh, appreciated it and started to realize it it's a win-win situation, okay? It's a win for the customer, obviously, because he can do price comparisons, he can browse this airline schedules on his own and visualize what he wants to see quickly. He can cut and try different things as much patience as he has to get the price down. So it's much, much better for the consumer. But what about the, the provider, the airlines? Well, it's much better for them because it's just software that's running on machines, okay? It's much lower cost for them and uh, and so they're winning too. I point out in my talk about the web near the end, sort of a punchline, that in doing big science we're solving, we're finding solutions to problems that the general public don't know they have. So who would predict that out of high energy physics research you would come, something like the web would, would come up, I think that would be unpredictable. But in hindsight you can see that it was a natural place for uh, for the web to have been invented.